Hello everyone, welcome back to Sailor School. There has been a little bit of delay uh, since I have not uploaded many videos uh, in the following months together. So right now I am uploading an entire playlist containing the material which is required for your GMDSS course. This being the first video, I will talk about what is GMDSS and what are its objectives. And we will also talk about how Indian GMDSS course is designed and also we'll have some insights about the exam pattern and the type of questions the surveyors usually ask. So I will let you know about all the things that will happen during your examinations, what will be happening. So by watching the videos of this playlist, uh, what you will come to know is you will gain knowledge about the GMDSS, the course as well as the GMDSS, what you will learn and the exam part we'll also look into various different uh, sample question papers related to the gmdss course this uh, written paper will be coming in the first part of your examination and the later part will be your orals and practicals about that also we will be trying to talk about briefly so you know the indian examination patterns for seafarer it is always repeated the question papers which we will discuss in these videos will usually help you to uh, pass the exams also. So you should have a thorough knowledge of all this GMDSS equipment because it is a crucial part of your career. But when coming to this course and examination point of view, the question papers which we will be discussing, all these questions if you go through once, that is more than sufficient to get you above 90 percentage. Uh, we will cover about 90 percentage of the questions possible questions and that will help you to pass also in the written part oral part and the practical parts it is entirely up to your own uh, hard work patience as well as when you talk about is practice the more you practice the practical the better you will become because here you can make any mistakes make mistakes during your GMDSS course learn from those mistakes because now you can learn from these mistakes. On board, if you make these mistakes, this comes under a crime. Crime means if you don't have a thorough knowledge, then uh, you can't say once you become, become an officer, you cannot tell uh, you cannot tell if any incident happens. I didn't have knowledge to operate these equipments. They will never consider because GOC is a document which is given by the government to you authorizing that you are sufficient to operate in GMDSS equipment. If you fail to operate or if you don't know the procedure, they can put a criminal case against you in case of emergency and you fail to operate. So please guys, consider this GMDSS course is very crucial course and it is very important and you must know each and everything, have a basic knowledge about each and every equipment. When you go on board, usually, as a cadet or TME, whatever you are, you will not be allowed to do fingering of these equipments. Fingering means not the thing which is running in your mind, but means uh, usually operating and seeing what's uh, there inside the menu options, etc. Most of the things, even as a cadet, I was not allowed because they were scared that I'll be blindly pressing the distress button because they used to screw my ass. I used to work for uh, 16 hours every day during my cadetship. So, they thought I might do something stupid. So they never allowed me basically to, to, to use this equipments. So this was the, this depends upon the officers you will be under. So my officers, most of them were okay, but some of them were average, but uh, the major part were uh, strict and uh, I don't know. I didn't get along well as a cadet, but right now, the knowledge which I am having, I have learned a lot from them. It's not that uh, if they are being angry on you or if they things which they say you don't understand or something like that. Uh, you just have to go through this 18 months of cadetship training and onboard etc. Because that will help you gain skills and you will, if you handle the pressure during that time, I'm sure you can handle your shipping life. So coming back from this personal agenda. When you are talking about GMDSS, the Indian GOC course design and the exam pattern. Okay, the Indian GMDSS course is basically a 12 days course only. Plus, you will have five days of examination. 
during this total of 17 day period you will undergo proper training on how to operate each and every gmdss equipment you will know about its certificates documentation how to operate how to send a distress signal and how to operate normal routine call how to do test and uh, etc etc whichever required for your navigational purpose distress purpose everything they will teach you if they did not teach you you are supposed to learn because it's your responsibility as a student as an officer to learn all these things so after this you should gain a thorough knowledge of all this distress alerts messages their formats and how to carry out the maintenance of these equipments also okay so now you know how many days the gmdss course last so now when we come to the examination pattern part so it is basically consist of two parts part 1 and part 2 part 1 means is a written paper in written paper you will have two sections section a and section b okay section a will be having 30 mcq questions or objective questions or multiple choice questions whichever you understand you understand okay that will be for 30 marks 30 objectives for 30 marks each carrying one mark so section b if you talk about it will be like five uh, briefly written or descriptive type questions so 5 into 6 marks there will be like one question is for 6 marks so 5 into 6 equals to your 30 marks again so total this part 1 consists of a written paper total of 60 marks in this 60 marks how much is a passing percentage so if you want to understand about passing percentage you must score 18 marks in your objectives out of 30 as well as you must score 18 marks in this descriptive type so out of uh, this uh, both the things so total of 36 marks out of 60 will be your passing percentage individually you have to score 18 and 18 okay so if you talk about descriptive type questions it will be basically a message format and definitions and uh, sometimes they will ask you transmitter and receiver diagrams and etc like that a lot more that i will tell you in later videos so a uh, part 2 will be differentiated into four different uh, sub topics or sub areas whatever it is first we will be writing about commercial log commercial log means nothing that you will listen a radio message uh, the one guy will be telling blabbering out any message the same thing you are supposed to copy exactly because on board ship when you are in a navigational watch in singapore strait etc suddenly you will receive a distress alert or something master will be on bridge also but sole duty of a duty officer or any officer for instance you are supposed to write a message listening to that uh, radio telephony voice which he comes indians talking to indians we can understand but imagine a filipino or a singapore guy or whatever it is chinese when they speak english they speak in such a cruel manner no one can even understand many a times i have felt miserably you will also so you are supposed to write such messages it is just a this commercial log is consisting of 30 marks a guy will be chanting out this message and the same thing will be written by all the students who are giving this commercial log so what happens is this commercial log is the easiest part in part 2 after this commercial log you will be going through a simulator practicals simulator practical usually is conducted by a wpc surveyors so when you are going for exam there will be two surveyors okay one guy will be coming from your dg nautical surveyor the other guy will be coming from wpc so now we are talking about uh, this simulator practical simulator practical usually three equipments they will ask sat b sat c fleet 77 and some questions related to propagation that means how this radio waves will propagate how the message will be sent so etc everything will come under simulator practical this will be usually carried out by wpc surveyors and uh, then next part of this thing is known as part c which you, which is a practical of mf hf and vhf equipment this carries 20 marks okay the sat b sat c and fleet 77 was of 30 marks this mf hf and vhf carries of 20 marks so mf hf vhf what they will do usually is they will ask you to send a distress alert or they will ask you to send a communication routine communication call routine communication message by nbdp or telex mode part d means uh, 
so topic d you will be having a practical or a questionnaire usually about safety equipments battery and its documents these things will be usually uh, done by the dg surveyor who will uh, dg nautical surveyor he will ask you questions related to epub sart and the battery and the documents required as per the gmdss also particular caution to be paid to the antenna rigging plan okay so also note note this thing once you pass in part 1 that is a written paper which we talked earlier then only you will be allowed to participate or allowed to write exams of part 2 that is a practical part so here usually it won't be like an order like uh, after you complete the part 1 returns then selective number of candidates who passed in the written exam will be allowed for part 2 okay so what they'll do suppose you imagine that you are a group of 100 people appearing at a for a single uh, place or the examination center this 100 people will be divided into groups of 20 25 15 on the basis of surveys on their requirement or their happiness they will divide these groups one group will be attending a one group will be doing b like uh, one will be doing communication log other will be doing mfhf practicals like this they will exchange you groups and they will uh, see the marks then they will allot the marks at last and then they will display the results by evening whether you are pass or fail whatever it is they will display by the evening time evening one hour half an hour they'll take then they will decide so this uh, this mingling of the groups or like uh, vice versa whatever you think so basically what i'm trying to say is there is no such order that first you will go, uh, try for communication log then you will go for uh, simulator practicals sat c fleet 77 etc there is no no order at all part 1 there is exam after that you enter into part 2 you split into groups you don't know according to your role number which group where you will might end up so be prepared always with all the practicals if you are having good luck on that day that uh, if you are selected in a batch but your name comes as middle or last then ask the questions which uh, like as soon as the first guy who went in and comes out ask him the common questions the examiner will ask okay a guy can't think more out of box or more creative he can't become so particular day he will ask uh, usually he will ask the same questions again and again and expect different answers but one question will have many answers so in that case you guys will be safe and you will do well so in considering part 2 totally we talked about this four sub topics right in this part 2 so you must score 70 and come uh, above is the requirement to pass but uh, here also i heard that some surveyors will individually keep like 70% in every practical which you take like uh, for uh, it should be about 23 for 30 marks it should be above 15 or 14 for 20 marks etc some surveyors will consider like that some other surveyors will consider as entirely as 70 marks it depends on them still we have no idea i even asked during my gmdss course also this discussion was going on how much is a passing percentage so guys so the only thing i can say is you do prepare well give you a first shot always understand this the first attempt is your best attempt if you fail in this exams you can come and again attempt uh, next month okay but the problem is that you will not be in touch with the subject you will not be in touch with this practical one month gap everything will be out of your memory okay so first attempt your best attempt the 12 days which we are talked about that gmdss course 12 days will be there na 12 days every day read your portions complete day to day portions understand if you have any doubts do out of this 12 days i suggest you to do 7 days of always practicals means go operate the equipment resend the message resend the message there should not be any error check if messages are being received by the alternative systems accordingly uh, understand the pattern of the message or the format of the message whatever it is you supposed to understand this properly hard work is the key guys hard work this written test whatever question papers i'll be displaying in the upcoming videos that will help you but this theory part and the practical part you should have a knowledge uh, so we were a batch of 80 people in uh, chennai i gave i think uh, around it has been around 4 to 5 months before i have done my gmdss out of this 80 people 
I'll not name the institute where it happened, whatever it is. Out of this 80 people in total, considering like there were four to five institutes together, we were uh, the entire batch was around 80 or you can say 90, something like that. But the passing percentage of some institutes were very low. So out of 80, we were passed only 55 people passed out, 55, 56 only passed out. Rest all of them were failed. This failure people who failed, na, so they did mistakes. Uh, some people failed in written exams itself. They did not uh, qualify. And some people when they are coming to this questionnaire and stuff, I mean asked by the oral examiner, they just, uh, they just this one blind mistake. A few people did. They were caught. So some issue happened over there. The blind mistake was the first guy went inside. He the examiner asked him the questions and he came. He told to the guys waiting outside who are going for next interview. The examiner twisted the question. This guy gave the same answer which the earlier the guy said. So they discussed. He gave the same answer for a different question. So that doesn't make any sense. People being blind and being blind is okay, but you're not supposed to be dumb. You're supposed to think before whatever the thing is. So after that incident, that examiner called the guy whom he asked the question because that was an unique question. He asked only one time. He called the guy back and that guy went, then he failed him also. He failed the guy who gave the wrong answer. So he found it, uh, this as like cheating type thing. So you will see a different characters when you go to examine hall. Be careful of them. Don't uh, exchange words and stuff with them. Because if you exchange, you will be the loser at the end. Your main motto must be one thing. Clear GMDSS at first shot. Understand all the equipments. Do good in your uh, exams. As well as you should gain a knowledge. This is not only Ratta 5. Go and uh, spit it out. Then you come here, you forget all the bullshit. It doesn't work out like that. GMDSS is required. You are you know, licensed officer means you must know everything. So we talked about this exam pattern and uh, the course design everything okay so let us understand like some people will be confused what is this wpc what role does dg shipping has in your gmdss course okay if you see this flow chart this is dg shipping under dg shipping a small element is known as mmd mmd is mercantile marine department similarly wpc is wireless uh, planning and coordination wing ministry of communication so this is a long full form, this WPC, this wireless planning, something like that, okay. So this thing, they asked me, means uh, they asked a guy who went before me, what do you mean by WPC, means what is the full form of WPC, that guy didn't know, even I didn't know, then they kicked him out, means uh, they just said, you go uh, without knowing the full form of WPC itself, you are coming to give a exam examination in front of a WPC surveyor. How dare you? So it was a valid question. So uh, as soon as I, I listened, I was overhearing all this. I listened. Then I started uh, Googling it out. Wireless planning and coordination wing ministry of communication. So these people are more to themselves. They will ask the questions which they will like. There is no nothing. There is no humanity. If they want to fail you, they will screw you over and they will fail you. So it is mostly it depends on the luck. So learn this full form of WPC also for your exam. It is just a suggestion, but if you want to take risk, take risk, it's up to you. Okay, now let me introduce you to the GMDSS. What do you mean by GMDSS? GMDSS means Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. It was actually a convention. Okay, it was implemented on 1st February 1992. And it was made mandatory from 1st Feb 1999 for vessels above 300 GRT. All passenger vessels on international voyages having a voyage period of 24 hours or more must implement this GMDSS. If you would like to know the reason, obviously now you would like to know why GMDSS was implemented. So see, before this GMDSS was introduced, Consider that as pre-GMDSS period, like before the GMDSS was introduced or implemented, all the radio-based equipments which are fitted on the ship was based on the gross tonnage of that vessel. Higher the gross tonnage, one additional radio equipment was required. 
that was a requirement in those old olden or golden days most of the times the requirements was only two vhfs were required means only two walkie talkies or two long range vhfs were required and nothing more was needed in those olden days the frequencies that were available during this old system of gmdss to use was only morse code morse code as you know guys it works on 500 kilohertz and 2182 kilohertz that was for voice communications for long range voice communication during those days both these frequencies had a limitations of the, in their range accordingly so long distance communication for distress or shore uh, sending and shore alert to the distress was not there even global coverage was also not there during olden days the old gmd system was largely ship to ship the point being made is in case if your vessel is in deep sea and if you are in danger or distress you are going to abandon the ship you are sending a distress alert that distress alert was only received by all other ships ship to ship communication only was there there is no shore department which could uh, do your rescue because you are in deep ocean region so because of this ship to shore distress alert were not there and the ships which will she said receiving your distress alert it was depending upon the mood of the captain whether he wants to help you or not if he didn't want to help you or if he wants to let you die you would be dead so that's how the olden days were there so there were no like uh, safety or security or uh, there were no your distress messages could not be sent to the shore no shore help was there because you are in deep uh, ocean region and uh, your distress was not received by the shore authorities now due to all such reasons all such uh, causes a new gmdss convention was made mandatory to all ships now this new gmdss convention which helped to reduce the time between the emergency or cause of emergency and the rescue time means if any ship is in distress then raised an alarm then it usually takes some time to assist right or to rescue the people who are in distress so this new gmds system helped to reduce that time interval and a wide range of frequencies or multiple modes of sending distress alerts were also introduced after this gmds convention was adopted a detailed layout of people to contact during a distress alert were also organized and laid out properly and also later gmds convention played a major role in imsr and uh, search patterns etc i hope by now you must have understood the importance of this course and i suggest all of you to take this course very seriously as the things which you learn in gmdss can sometimes save other people who are in danger can sometimes save yourself also please uh, it's my request humble request that uh, you guys when you're going undergoing this course do it whole heartedly hard work understand the concept understand the equipments and their functions properly so as i told you it is a crime by maritime law being a watch officer or a responsible person did not take appropriate action as required by the circumstances of the case in order to save the people in distress so practice how to use gmdss equipment by heart and thank you guys for bearing with this long and uh, thank you that's it for this video this is the part 1 of gmdss the following videos you will gain more additional knowledge information about this gmdss course if you watch this playlist completely you will surely have a better chance in passing your gmdss course and gaining your goc okay uh, thank you guys Have a good day